Now let's move toward the left ventricular hypertrophy. In the left ventricular hypertrophy, it is caused by increased afterload, hypertension, aortic valve stenosis, or increased preload in aortic rigors. Anything that puts more pressure, hypertension where the ventricle has to push harder to push the blood out from the heart, aortic valve stenosis where the valve is stenosed and the ventricle has to push hard. All these things result in hypertrophy of the heart. Now in left ventricular hypertrophy what you will see is that you will see deep S wave in V1 and V2. Now there will be deep S wave, bigger S waves in V1 and V2. This is what is different from the right ventricular hypertrophy. In right ventricular hypertrophy there was tall R wave. In V2 there is deep S wave. In V5 there will be tall R waves in V5 and V6. There will be tall R waves in V5 and V6. Now you will be thinking that this is a normal R wave progression that the QRS complex is negatively deflected in V1 and V2 and it is positively deflected in V5 and V6. You are very right about it. But the problem in left ventricular hypertrophy is that these waves are very long. These waves are very tall. The V5 is showing very tall R wave. Normal R wave is not very tall. Normal S wave is not very deep, but these waves are very deep, these waves are very tall. It indicates that there is left ventricular hypertrophy. Now how will you know that whether this S wave is deep or not, whether this R wave in V5, V6 is tall or not? To find that out, we have a criteria called as Kololian criteria. It's a very easy criteria. Don't fear the name, it's very easy. Basically, in Skololion criteria, what you do is that you look at V1 and V2 and you find out the deepest S wave and you measure its size in millimeter. And then you go for V5, V6 and you look for the tallest R wave and you also measure its size. And then you add up those and if the sum is greater than 35, that shows that there is left ventricular hypertrophy. That is so simple. Now let's solve this ECG. If we look at the S wave over here, let's calculate the size. Let's calculate the number of large boxes present in it. We have one, two, three, four, four and a half. So we have each large box is equal to five millimeter. So five multiplied by four is 20. 20, we have an extra part over here. So we'll say that there is 23 millimeter size of S wave in V2. Now let's calculate the size of R wave in V5. In V5, we have, we'll calculate, we'll start from here till here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, almost since we have an extra part over here. So this is 7 large boxes, 7 multiplied by 5, each large box is equal to 5 millimeters, 7 large boxes multiplied by 5 is 35. Now we will add the size of S wave in V2 and the R wave size in V5. And if the sum is greater than or equal to 35, that means that there is left ventricular hypertrophy. If the sum is greater than or equal to 35, it indicates that there is left ventricular hypertrophy. That is Skololion criteria. So simple. So in Skololion criteria, in step 1, you look at the largest S wave in V1 and V2 and you measure its size. Then you look at the largest R wave in V5, V6 and you measure its size. And you add them up. If the sum is greater than or equal to 35 millimeter, it means that there is left ventricular hypertrophy. That is Skololion criteria. Now let's solve this ECG and find out that whether left ventricular hypertrophy is there or not. Now what you should do is that you should pause the video and what you should do is that you measure the size of S wave over here and then you measure the size of R wave and you add them up and if the sum is greater than or equal to 35, it means that there is left ventricular hypertrophy. Now let's move toward the answer. If we look at V1 and V2, we have a deeper S wave in V1. Now let's calculate the size of S wave. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, it's more than 4. So we'll say that the V1 is 23. Now let's calculate the number of large boxes in the R wave. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, slightly more than 5. So 5 multiplied by 5, each large box is equal to 5 millimeter. 5 multiplied by 5 is 25, we'll give 2 more for this extra, so that is 27. So the size of S wave in V1 is 23, size of uh, R wave in V5 is 27. And the sum is more than 35, which indicates that there is left ventricular hypertrophy. That is the Skololion criteria. Now let's look at this ECG. 
in this ecg we have the deepest s wave in v1 this is the deepest s wave and we have the tallest r wave in v5 what you should do is you should pause the video solve this ecg calculate the r and s add them up and if the sum is greater than 35 this is left ventricular hypertrophy moving toward the answer we have one two three four four large boxes in this s wave four multiplied by five is 20 so the size is 20 millimeter in v1 let's calculate the size of r wave in v5 we have one two three four more than four large boxes in r wave so four multiplied by five is 20 for the extra we'll give three 23 millimeter in v5 now the sum is 43 the sum is more than 35 so there is left ventricular hypertrophy in this ecg now as in right ventricular hypertrophy we also have strain pattern in left ventricular hypertrophy whenever there is hypertrophy in the ventricle there is a strain pattern seen on ecg in the in the strain pattern you will see t wave inversion in the lateral leads and it might look like an mi it might look like ischemia it, that's why it's called as acs imitator acute coronary syndrome imitator it imitates ischemia but it is not a subendocardial or transmural ischemia now this ecg is showing a strain pattern this mild elevation of st segment where it is sloping upward directly this is a strain pattern if there is left ventricular hypertrophy with that you see this thing then it is a strain pattern it is not ischemia ischemia is usually straight initially and then there is elevation so the elevation is usually straight in the first part so if there is left ventricular hypertrophy and with that you see uh, in literal leads a pattern like this this is a strain pattern this is not ischemia now in this ecg this st segment elevation where it is directly sloping upward this is a strain pattern now if there are findings of left ventricular hypertrophy there are strain findings in the ecg and these strain findings are not showing ischemia this is this is a strain pattern this is not showing ischemia ischemia usually shows a flat part there is st segment elevation where there is initial flat part so the, this is a strain pattern this is ischemia now usually it is difficult to differentiate that uh, whether this is a strain pattern or it is an infarction in a pattern like this now it is safer to decide clinically based on the patient's symptoms this is quite clear in over here we have this upward sloping that upward sloping is a strain pattern this is a classical strain pattern it can be easily differentiated from ischemia where there is st segment depression if there is sloping like this from the j point to the t wave inversion this sloping is classical for a uh, strain pattern and it is it is easy to identify as compared to patterns over here which are quite confusing now in this ecg we have compared strain pattern with ischemia in the strain pattern you can see the sloping look at the upward sloping look at the j point the interjection of the uh, s wave with the st segment this is the sloping this clear cut sloping is a strain pattern and over here this is ischemia this is an ischemia this is an ecg showing ischemic pattern but these things are to be decided clinically based on the patient's symptoms now let's solve this ecg by six step interpretation method let's look at the general impression the general impression looks good let's look at the calibration the calibration is standard it is being printed out at 25 millimeter per second two large boxes tall one large box wide although it's slightly less than that but since they have already mentioned that it is 25 millimeter per second so it is a standard calibration let's look at the rate we have one two three so 300 150 100 and slightly more than that so we have 110 beats per minute sinus rhythm p waves are present p waves sinus rhythm at the rate of 110 beats per minute let's look at the r wave progression the r wave progression over here looks pretty good because they are positively deflected and it is negatively deflected in avr which is normal let's look at the precordial lead it is negatively deflected in v1 and it is it is somewhat positively deflected which is not normal v5 v6 are positively deflected so overall it is a good r wave progression it's not very bad there is some pathology over here as well now let's look for the excess deviation for the excess deviation we'll have to look at the lead one and lead avf we'll, have, we'll look at the qrs complexes if both of the qrs complexes are facing upward they're positively deflected it's normal excess
So uh, both of them are positively deflected, which is a normal axis. So the axis is normal. Let's look for bundle branch. Let's look for M wave in V1 and V2, V5 and V6. We don't have M wave, so it, there is no bundle branch block present. Now let's look for the atrial enlargement. In the atrial enlargement, let's look for the P waves. The P waves are looking normal over here. But uh, in the V1, we have the negative deflection. In the V1, we have quite prominent negative deflection. And in left atrial enlargement, there is prominent uh, negative deflection in the second part. So this is not very clear cut finding of left atrial enlargement. But from where I took this uh, ECG, it pointed that this is a left atrial enlargement. But it is not very clear because we do not have the notched hump waves in lead one. So even if you mention none, that will also be right. Now let's look at the ventricular hypertrophy. For ventricular hypertrophy, let's look at the deepest S wave. So we have the deepest S wave over here. It starts from here, it ends over here. There is a deepest S wave. Let's calculate its size. We have one, two, three, four, four, more than four large boxes. So four multiplied by five is equal to 20. 20 plus two extra, 22. Let's look at the R wave. We have the tallest R waves over here. And they are having one, two, three, four large boxes. Four multiplied by five is 20. 20 plus 22 is 42. More than 35 is left ventricular hypertrophy. So there is left ventricular hypertrophy, which is 42 millimeters. So now we'll complete the rhythm interpretation. Now in this rhythm, there is another pathology. If you, if you look on this, if you focus, there is another abnormal QRS present over here. There is an abnormal QRS present over here. This is actually a premature ventricular contraction. What is premature ventricular contraction? I have already made a video on that. So in this ECG, we also have a pathology over here. A premature ventricular contraction is present. So we'll write the rhythm interpretation as sinus rhythm at the rate of 110 beats per minute with a premature ventricular contraction with somewhat left atrial enlargement and left ventricular hypertrophy. So this is the beauty of six second method where you find out each and every pathology because you go in a systemic manner. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button. We talked about left ventricular hypertrophy. We talked about the causes of left ventricular hypertrophy, the ECG findings, the Scololeon criteria where we calculate the size of S wave and add it to the uh, R wave in V5, V6. If the sum is greater than or equal to 35 millimeter, that shows left ventricular hypertrophy. Then we solved some ECGs. Strain pattern, ACS imitator. This is how strain pattern appears. This is how strain pattern appears comparison of strain pattern with ischemia then we solve the ecg by six step method if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on ecg interpretation made easy by six step method the link of those videos is given in the description below thank you very much